Welcome to SleuthCast with Dr. Bear, Bumpy Bear, and Swiss Bear. Join them in the den for some bear opinions on gaming. And now, our host, Dr. Bear. Hey, how are you? I'm Doc. Welcome to the SleuthCast with my co-host, Bumpy. Hello. And Swiss. I'm invisible. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, we're going to do some story time with the bears. It's going to be a good time. Uh, we got some good stories for you. They're going to seem unbelievable, but they might be true. They might not. You never know. Um, I'm not smart enough to fabricate a fucking story. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, so yeah, so story time. Um, okay, obviously, well, first, as, first off, before, first off. to preface this, there's stuff that we're not going to tell. And then there's, there's stuff things we that we may out. leave out. Yeah. Um, um, no, okay. First off, I'm, I'm going to say I might sound a little sicky icky. And I would like to ask you out of the uh, uh, <laughs> the original question was, what's the word sickness? But I feel like you cancer. motherfuckers would be like, cancer. <laughs> yeah, cancer. <laughs> out of all the, like, the common sicknesses, what do you think is the worst? Because I mean, like, I'm, I'm just annoyed with what Chlamydia. I have. Like, y- yeah. I guess. I don't know. I never had it. <laughs> you can get rid of it, but it's probably the worst, worst than a flu. Yeah. I mean, like, because I just have a stuffy ass nose, a headache, and a rough throat, but, uh, sorry. It, it's, it's annoying. Um, but I'm just going to answer my own question here. Uh, strep throat. That shit yeah. sucks ass. Yeah, strep throat. That shit bullshit. sucks. That is not fun. No. I've had that twice in the span of like four months, and I was like, get it out. Take my tonsils. Have you taken all of your medication? I did. I took all my antibiotics. <laughs> now we're good. All right, good to go. <laughs> I was a, I was very, uh, very dumb and just didn't take my antibiotics. I was like, yeah, I'm feeling better. I'm fine. <laughs> I learned. I got yeah, you. Yeah, you fucked around and you found out, my man. I did. So, uh, with these stories, um. I've had a multitude of life experiences, and I've done some dumbass shit. So the stories could be wild. Mine might actually be 100% factual. I don't remember all of it, so you know, I blacked some shit out. Swiss has got... I know he's got one good-ass story he's going to tell. Love the story. It's a good story. Um, so I will start this one, because I, I, I got a couple stories. I'll, I'll we'll, we know, we'll rotate around, tell stories. Uh, my story is, so, growing up, it was just me as a kid, you know, for the first, like, three years of my life, and then my mom had my brother, so we were really close, and as we grow up, you know, he's, he's like, oh, I look up to my big brother, his mistake, sorry. Brother bear. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, we're growing up, we get to about the, eight, the ripe young age of five, and I'm like eight, and we're, you know, we're, we're messing around, we're doing hooligan shit as kids would do you know because the boys will be boys thing back in the day now they put you in jail whatever but that's not the <laughs> point so what we did probably would have landed us in jail okay but murder back then was legal <laughs> no <laughs> no never legal Maybe. i'm over here like the suspect has a penis bring in the squad team <laughs> <laughs> so anyway like our neighbor had a garage and they had these big doors windows on it and we we're fucking around we we're bored i'm looking in the garage i'm looking in the garage i'm like "Ooh, is that a turtle shell i really want that I look at my brother i'm like hey dude remember when my turtle went missing mind you i've never had a turtle never ever had a turtle in my almost 40 years of life <laughs> he's like oh dude they took your turtle i said yeah bro you ready to get that turtle back? We're going to have to do some stuff, man. Wait, wait, wait. wait. How old were you guys? Like eight I and was five, eight, right? and I convinced my five-year-old brother to kick a door in. Okay, but... The, but <laughs> so my thing is, <laughs> he lived with you this entire time, and... Yeah. Like, he you were trusted like, oh, his yeah, remember brother, this? dude, and he fucked up, okay? <laughs> remember that one turtle? <laughs> <laughs> we still talk about it at family gatherings. I bring it up occasionally, and he's like, yeah, I can't believe I trusted this asshole. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, he kicks the door in. We get the turtle, right? 
And I'm like, oh my god, they killed him! And I gave it some arbitrary name, don't remember what it was, but I was like, oh my god, so we were gonna bury it, and then I pretended to bury it, but I put it in my room. <laughs> a dead fucking, like, fossilized turtle in my room, because, you know, I'm young and dumb, whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> knock at the door. Doot, doot, doot. My mom comes back. Um, the police are at the door for you? For Shut me? up! I didn't do anything, yeah. Because they thought we stole something, and I was like, no, just found this turtle in that garage that was unlocked. <laughs> but the, yes, the garage that was kicked in. Yeah, 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 we definitely <laughs> kicked that shit in, dude. Uh, anyway, the neighbor was cool about it, didn't press charges, and I gave the turtle back, and then from then until now, it's literally the, the famed but, non-existent so my thing is, turtle. My thing is, what the fuck... Were they so hyped about a turtle for? I, I get it was their property, but they're just like, no, we need that turtle. We need it back now. <laughs> you know, that's something I never understood. I the mean, maybe girl, it's so. the concept Last... of breaking and entering. Yeah. The old B&E uh, to get a turtle. I consider it a rescue mission, you know what I'm saying? Gotta liberate that fucker. Hey, man, Koopa Gooding Jr. needed rescue. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Koopa Gooding Jr. Trademark it. So, so yeah. Years of playing Super Mario Brothers Three, and like, God damn it, if Junior would just get out of my way. <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, we stole the turtle, and um, I convinced my younger brother that breaking and entering was fun. I don't Wait, recommend he... it; it's not ideal. But you did know. he do it again later in life? No, no, he learned his lesson, and he doesn't well, he trust me fully. So it's smart boy. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Smart bear. All right, Bumpy, you got a story, or are we gonna let Swiss roll? Uh, we can let we can let Swiss go because I'm All excited right, for Swiss. his story. Wait, Just let me give you a good entrance. Uh, so. Leave out actual names. Yeah, no, we're good. All right, um, let, me, let me let me give you an so... entrance real quick. Okay, which one do you think I'm telling? <laughs> I'm hoping it's sleepy time, dog. <laughs> Cause sleepy uh, time we'll is awesome. Sleepy time. Yeah. We'll, we'll get right. sleepy time. Um, first off, for me, first one I'll share is I'm gonna piggyback on the uh, younger sibling thing. So yeah. uh, I have a younger sibling, uh, younger sister. Uh, there's an 11 year gap between us, though. And to top it all off, my little sister's growth plate. Uh, closed early, so she is effectively four Toddler. seven the rest of her life. Uh, Doctor Bears met her. Yeah, um, sorry, but like she's like a, a toddler. Whole, dog. It's fucking funny. She's a whole crap ton of attitude and sass just packed into this tiny package. Um, personality is definitely bigger than her, and it always has been. But uh, so with there being the eleven year old eleven year gap, um, I had already moved out. And our parents were trying to do some stuff around the house. Outside, they were replanting some trees and stuff like that. And she was just complaining the whole time we're working on stuff. And my parents are like, well, then don't do it. Well, you didn't, nobody said you had to do this. I'm like, it was just getting to that point where, like, they wouldn't have put up with this for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. by now, they would have freaking screamed at me. I'd have been in trouble. This is a grounded situation. And I'm watching them just you know continue well it's okay you don't have to so to break it all up we had a bunch of miracle grill and i you know it was the powder form so i literally grabbed a handful of it and just threw it at her so I doused <laughs> her in the miracle grill and then we had a bucket with water nearby because uh -huh. of some of the stuff we were doing it was a five gallon bucket i just doused her with the five gallon bucket and i did all this in front of my parents and so now all three of them are staring at me like oh my god what did you just do and i looked right at my sister and i'm trying to help you grow the fuck up a little bit <laughs> <laughs> oh that That's story i love that one too dog <laughs> i didn't get in, i didn't get in trouble nobody yelled they all thought it was funny so this is this pretty much sets the tone for swiss bear's life this is this is how That's this goes that's it's, fucking hilarious. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. If you've never met a sister, this is um, pretty chill, too. I, it's funny, too, because, like, if anybody else were to have done that to her, you would have had a fight on your hands immediately. Full-blown physical fight. Because I am the older sibling, though, and I normally don't do stuff like that unless you really pushed me someplace. She took it as a, like, 
oh, I really need to mellow out a bit here. Start doing something. <laughs> like, so, I mean, it all went well, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that, that should set the tone for Swiss Bear's life for you. I, I have an entire life of random shit like that. So Dude, That's awesome. That, I, I, I love how, like, w- within anger of just doing yard work, you were just like, I'm going to fucking angrily just pull out this pun out of my ass. Yeah. With the fucking I was so literally funny. having one of those moments where I, I needed to grab some more miracle grow and the only thought that ran through my mind as I reached down for it was, God, she needs to grow the fuck up. And I saw the miracle grow and my brain just went, Here we go. Click click. <laughs> yeah. Pop, pop, like, here we go, like miracle grow, water, like so you know, I washed her off right away. It's not like I hurt her with the miracle grow. <laughs> Clearly, it didn't work because I've met her. It's not any better. Yeah, it didn't work. It, you know, <laughs> She's okay. stuck. <laughs> not work on humans. Again, so. I would have loved. I would have loved it if she just didn't like wash it off and like she woke up the next day. She just has grass growing on her. She's like, "Help! Help! No!" <laughs> See, I would have laughed if only the only thing that grew on her was the area that got hit. So, like her torso and arms would stay tiny, but man, her legs would have gotten taller. <laughs> Because I was nice. I didn't, like, throw it in her face. I wasn't trying to blind her or anything. I just caught her across the legs with it. That's fair. But, At least you yeah. were, like, a nice asshole. I guess. <laughs> hey, you know, sometimes the asshole's oh, yeah. got to be nice. Oh, yeah. That's the only way you can truly enjoy being an asshole. But true. True. You know. It's the difference between a good one and a bad one. <laughs> a good one knows there being one gets to enjoy it every second of the way. Hell yeah. Bumpy. All right, since we're since we're talking about some some lawn work here, um, I have a, I have a small story about a backyard, and so it was uh my buddy Red, my buddy Orange, and we were uh we were drinking, we were drinking in uh, Red's grandma's house, uh, cause that was, grandma. uh, that was our safe pit place to do illegal activities. So was so, grandma hot? Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> you know I gotta ask if grandma was a, was was like a ten of ten, bro. Why wasn't you uh, <laughs> going to be a sugar baby? You know what I mean? Uh, if you guys couldn't tell, we found. Granny a was a flapper back in the day. Um, uh, shit. If you guys couldn't tell, we found a soundboard. Bra bra. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> <Wham>. <laughs> uh, so we were, we were sli- sipping on some some gin and uh, juice. No blue blue UV because we were oh, children. Yeah. Oh, dude, we that still... that was the thing when you first started drinking too. Is UV blue and red because they were like ten bucks. It was so bad. It sucked. Yeah, it, I hate that shit. It's so it's so bad. Anyways, so in our in our probably tipsy uh, stupor, we thought we were in a drunken stupor, but uh, we were just like, guys, you know, what would be fucking awesome right now, a fire. Let's just go. Let's just go get a fire pit going. And so, oh lord, <laughs> keep in mind there was no well. fire pit. Yeah. Oh shit. All right. <laughs> there, there was no fire pit, so about to do some redneck stuff. <laughs> so grandma was out. It was just us three. We were we were a little drunk, maybe a little uh stuff, but uh, uh <laughs> we uh we went to the backyard, we grabbed our shovel, started digging, and we we're just like, cool. Then come to figure figure out that we didn't have any fucking wood. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just like Man, this sucks. Where do we find wood? So obviously we, we looked around, we found some twigs and everything, which is fine. We just we just wanted some uh, gratification here. Uh, so we got a bunch of cardboard, and and we started like we're like, okay, how do we start this? So I just took a lighter, started going. We're like, okay, this isn't fucking working. Then uh, my buddy Red was just like, oh wait, there's gasoline in the in the in the garage. I was like, cool, go get it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> So we started pouring a little on there. We lit it on fire. It wasn't like catching, so we're just like, "Fuck, what do we do?" So, red being uh, red, and me being me, uh, agreeing to the situation, decided to take the, the one of the good old fashioned red canisters for gasoline and just start pouring it. And uh, mm-hmm. at this time, uh, our buddy Orange was inside getting some snacks because we were drunk. <laughs> we wanted snacks. snacks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, so at this time, uh, Red started pouring gasoline on the fire, and all of a sudden the fire traveled up to the <laughs> gas tank. Yeah, that's how fire works. Yep. 
and then the gas <laughs> tank was on fire. And the first the first thought that came into Red's head was drop it and kick it across the damn lawn. That's a fair assessment of the the danger. Yes. And That's and again, one. keep in mind, there's still fire in the gas tank. <laughs> That's a terrible fucking idea. Yeah. Hey man. So <laughs> in the moment, he made the best decision he had with the information he had. No, uh, no. He, uh, no, no, he fucking made the bear, worst decision, dude. the bear raised by volunteer firefighters, this is like the dumbest thing. <laughs> you know, the fastest way to put that out is to close the two ends on the gas can, and it'll put itself out. Panic. It'll suffocate. <laughs> Suffocation, no breathing. See, I think in our anyway, head, we're... Anyway, uh, I, I, I think in our head, we're just like... Us. I think the the thought in our head was like gasoline, fire, explosion. We need to get this far away from us as possible. <laughs> there, yeah, self preservation. Um, so in the in the span or the the seconds leading up to us kicking it, our friend walked out with like two platefuls of food. <laughs> so in in the seconds happening, uh, Orange comes out with the two uh, two plates of food because again we wanted snacks. Yeah, and he literally saw the fire. Like rain, rainbow arc oh, across dude. the yard. He just dropped the food. He was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> um. Okay, that's the type of shit you see on like World Star. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he was just, uh, so me and Red. Uh, our, our first thought process was to, you know, suffocate it. Now, now we thought about suffocating it. Natural. So, uh, we grabbed a, a plastic tarp. <laughs> Oh. And we started damping it all out, and uh, this yeah, is you can why definitely... we love Fumpy. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> he means well, but he doesn't always execute it perfectly. Okay, he's trying. Yeah, I mean, hey, it, we, uh, me and Orange well, didn't get in trouble. Then, yeah. Hey, that's fine. Yeah. Or, uh, Red got in trouble. That's for sure. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, yeah, because like we we woke up the next morning and there was just burn marks on the lawn. We left a tarp that was burnt and singed just on the fucking ground. Still a hole that wasn't there prior. <laughs> oh lord, that's funny. <laughs> we did not think about this fucking clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Good fucking times though. Good times. Oh, yeah, the learning experience, man. That's what being young and dumb is all about. Oh yeah, you know. So. I got a good story here. Um, as you all know, I served in the military. And uh, in, in the military, you do a lot of stupid ass shit. Okay. You guys think it's all fun and game. I mean, it's a lot of bullshit. But in order to get through the bullshit, you do a bunch of dumb shit. So uh, I'll tell one of these stories. Uh, so we're in. I just got back from Korea. I'm stationed in, in Fort Sill. You know, um, I met a dude, cool ass dude. We started hanging out. That's when my wife at the time had split from me. So we were like, all right, we're going to go to the bar and pick up some chicks. Cause you know, we're in the army. We're young, dumb, full of cum. You know what I mean? Like going <laughs> to do dumb ass shit. Right. So we meet these chicks <laughs> on, uh, I think it was meet me at the time. And they took the top down picture. So they, first off, they catfished us cause they were some thick girls. And I wasn't truly into bigger girls at the time, you know what I mean? Like I was like, model, you that's what I want, you know? So they took you the weren't down with the thickness? Uh I was not, but at that night I was. So let me finish, you son of a bitch. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so you know, me and my buddy. Mind you, he messaged me a couple of years after this because he stayed in the army and he's like, I told my soldiers a story and they thought it was awesome. So I want to thank you for that night. Like, six to eight years later, he thanked me for that night. Like, it was a life experience that he wouldn't ever trade, right? That's what happens when you hang with me. You, you get life experiences, because I do some crazy shit. But, so, they, you know, we met him. We went to their house. He's like, oh, our parents are sleeping. We're like, that's weird. We brought, oh, a, no. we brought a case of beer. Oh, no. No, it's okay. I promise. They're 18. Say what? <laughs> <laughs> like... We're like, all right, let's go back to base. Let's go hang out at our barracks, right? No big deal. We get to the post. We get out. We get to the base. We're getting checked in by the MPs, and they look at her ID. One girl's nineteen. The other one had just turned eighteen, like two days ago. Oh boy! And I'm like, oh god, are they? Is one of mine? We're about to get fucked up. It's two in the morning, and we're bringing girls on post, right? 
we're gonna, we're about to fucking get fucked up. And the MP's like, all right, you're good to go. And I'm like, oh, thank God. So we're driving back to the barracks. And as we're driving into the parking lot, we see a bunch of our buddies we went to the bar with and abandoned to go get these chicks. Nice girls, by the way. Like, they are decent human beings, of course. Because that's all I deal with. But uh, <laughs> we're driving. We see our buddies. We're like, nope, not bringing these girls in with them fucking standing right there. So we drove around to the front. And I ran him in. And he went and parked the car in the back. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like me and the one girl was hanging out you know whatever things happened whatever you know i wasn't drunk she was drunk whatever consensual all good my buddy brings the girl he's like hey man i'm gonna go to bed take him home he hands me his car keys and i was like uh like 20 minutes later i bring her up to his room knock on the door hand him his keys he said have fun and i walked away later oh that God. night he's he knocks the door he's like all right we can take him home Mind you, mind you, it was like two hours later. I was like, what the fuck was this dude doing for two hours when he said he wanted to go to bed? He proceeded to take shots of his vodka to be drunk enough to front and leaning rest like in a push-up position so he didn't touch her. And he had intercourse with her that way. Yeah. <laughs> and I made him reenact it for the first sergeant in the morning. First sergeant had a good sense of humor. I'm like, hey, you want to know what he did last night? He's like, what? And I showed him. I was like, hey. But show him. And he did. And he's like, you guys are the dumbest motherfuckers I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the chick that I was messing around. It's like, when's it my turn to him? Oh, geez. And he's, and he blocked her, dude. <laughs> but this was all like right before I got out of the army. Cause you know, I got divorced and shit, but, but yeah, we uh, met up with two girls. They were definitely not 21 and couldn't drink. That's why they couldn't meet us at the bar. Red flag one. We were already pre-gaming, so we didn't care. Number two is the down, red top or down picture. It. That's red flag two. Red flag three is when the MPs looked at her ID like four times and made sure that it was the right date. We should just turn around and took them home. Yeah. Young, dumb, baby. So, yeah. Dumb shit. That's fucked. Yeah. So, how, how big of a no-no is it for you to bring people on the... Uh, a minor is um, you're fucked. That's a good marshal, isn't it? Uh, yeah, you go to Leavenworth, which is the military prison. I was like, bro, oh, yeah. did we just get fucking catfished by these chicks to send us to prison? You know what I mean? Like, that was my first thought. I'm like, I don't want to. I want an 18 year old and up. Like, that's the legal age. I'm 25. <laughs> not what I went out for. I didn't sign up to go to jail. I signed up to get my pee pee touched, dude. God damn. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Fuck. So, yeah. Jeez. Uh, rule number th there's three rules when you're meeting up with a girl. If they have the top down picture, they're catfishing you because they don't look like that. They pick the most flattering angle for their boobs and their face, and then they send it to you. Remember it. Where's Where's the wisdom from, Doctor? Yeah. <laughs> words to live by. <laughs> the old fuck around and find out. The old sniff around. Hey, man, I almost fucked around and found out that night. You guys wouldn't have met me, dog. I'd have been fucked. <laughs> Glad it worked out, though. <laughs> So if you're listening to this, like and subscribe, because Dr. Bear's been through some shit to get here. Yeah. Better fucking like this shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goddamn. All right. Round two, Swissy uh, Bear. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and go with sleepy time here. We'll, we'll Hell save yeah. The Kirby story. This is what you've uh, all been waiting for. This is, yeah, this is one of the ones. So I, uh, Growing up, most of my aunts and my mother as well, Mama Bear, worked at a care facility for mentally challenged people or mentally disabled, so talking down syndrome, stuff like that, mm -hmm. where they aren't quite high enough functioning to live on their own, but they need some help. So I grew up around you know, people with mental issues and stuff like that, which meant that when I got into high school and stuff, I was very comfortable around the kids like that in our school that had those issues. And uh, I had a class that was a cooking class or home ec type class. Mm -hmm. And uh, for anybody that doesn't know, uh, Swiss Bear here, uh, like I make homemade pasta, like noodles from scratch. First off, that shit is delicious. Sauce. All right. It's damn good. Yeah. I, I, I enjoy cooking, so I, I do a lot of homemade from scratch stuff. Mrs. Bear has a giant garden. I'm uh, actually in the process of 
breaking down like 40 pounds of friggin' tomatoes into spaghetti sauce right now. Hot uh, damn. And so I had this class with one of the kids that had Down syndrome. Um, we're going to call him Bobber for the story. Bobber. And Bobber was a good kid. Uh, Bobber was a good guy. Um, and if you just tell him what you needed him to do, he would do it. Um, you just needed to talk to him. Yeah, that, way, and I, I like calm that. enough with him that he understood. Hell yeah, that, um, those are the hyper fixated that. kind of uh, kids where they they focus on the task and they get that task done to the best of their ability. And for Bobber, uh, it really came down to just having somebody that was willing to have him actually help in the group. Because yeah. I will say, um, you know, from a smaller town and sometimes where uh, people from smaller towns aren't exactly the most open to certain things. So as a result, Bobber, Bobber got picked on quite a bit. Um, so for him, he was just jacked to be working with somebody that wasn't like, I don't want you touching my food. Um, right, yeah. is actually total shit lot bag of moves on other pisses, people, yeah. Which pisses me off to none other. Cause oh, like, dude, because there's still people. They sorry, just don't function the like, way we do. Uh, for me, it's that, like, who's the real idiot? You can't catch Down syndrome, dumbass. Like, shut the hell up. Stop treating him like that. Um, yeah. They're... So I had him in my group, and this class was right after lunch. So, you know, he would meet by my locker, and we would walk to this classroom together because yeah. his last class was like two doors down from my locker. So, you know, Ooh, he'd come out of that chance. last class and uh, <laughs> you got the reference. So he'd come out of that class. He'd meet up with me and we'd uh, we'd head to that class. Well, mm -hmm. one day as we're heading there, uh, I'm a bigger I'm a bigger bear. I'm a little roly poly. Always have been. Soft, and uh, soft I don't bear. Speak so well. So I have a second pair of eyes. Um but as we were getting ready to head to this class, there was a guy in the hallway who called me a fat ass and a couple of other choice words. And to my surprise, Bobber out of nowhere stood up for me. The guy that's normally used to being picked on himself and mm -hmm. did not take kindly to this at all. Yeah. So he steps up and starts talking, you know, tells the kid to be quiet and everything else. And then the kid calls him the R word. Yeah. So I step over, and we start having words, because I'm not cool with that either. Um, exactly, dude. This guy said something else smart, and Bobber just looked at me, said sleepy time. Now, I'm trying to figure out what the hell sleepy time is. Because, <laughs> I mean, he looked right at me <laughs> and just said sleepy time. So I'm staring back at Bobber like, what the hell the sleepy time? For anybody that doesn't know... People with Down syndrome tend to have a larger muscle mass than most, so they're extra strong. That's where the, that old saying of the R word strength comes from. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It, it's a legit thing, mm -hmm. depending on your uh, condition. Exactly. But Bobber proceeded to punch this kid. I mean, just flat knuckled punched across the forehead. <laughs> I mean, square to the damn forehead. My hand hurts still thinking about it, just from how it happened. <laughs> But so Bobber pops this kid square in the forehead, just flat fist to forehead. And you hear fist to forehead, head to wall. He, he punched the kid hard enough that he just pop, pop, head to fist to wall. And this kid just collapses. I mean, books everywhere. The two buddies he had with him take off running. <laughs> they, they, they were tired, the bro. So now I'm standing in the hallway with Bobber. And a dude laying on the floor, books everywhere. When it hits Bobber that he shouldn't have hit this person. He's going to be in yep. And so now I've got Bobber full blown, like ugly crying in the hallway, not tears, yeah. everything feels super I'm guilty. In trouble. Yeah. And like, I had to walk him down to the principal's office, sit through this whole thing. And it's funny because we had cameras at our school, but they were fairly new. Yeah. So the principal listened to both sides of this story and finally, he asks me what happened, and I'm like, dude, you got the cameras, and I know we were on camera, because I pointed back at the camera nearest us. They'll be like, that's the camera we need to watch. You know? <laughs> like, I thought of this stuff right away. So after this kid tried claiming that like we attacked him and all this other stuff, and his buddies claimed they were never there, the principal brings it up and gets to see Bobber 
literally get in this confrontation, me walk up behind him, and then Bobber knocks dude out. <laughs> and his friends take off. So we ended up not getting in trouble. Nice. Um, but it was quite the experience because, I, like I said, I had to walk a crying Bobber down to the principal's office, get him to sit down, and then I had to go back and pick up the dude he knocked out. <laughs> Dude's still out there <laughs> taking a nap. It really was dude, sleepy Bobber time. Was, Bobber was crying so hard that when I got into the office and tried to tell like the nurse and the other people in the office about the other kid laying in the hallway, they legit did not hear or pay attention. to me. They were so worried about taking care of Bobber. So here I come back with this dude who's just starting to wake the hell up. <laughs> They're like, what happened to him? And I'm like, I tried to tell you. <laughs> dude done he got sleepy time. He took so, himself yeah, so, a nap. So, you know, sitting there in the principal's office, and the principal's like, what did he say just before he hit him? And I'm like, sleepy time. I have no idea. <laughs> what the hell it I, get it. I get it now, but boy, I didn't. That should have been his sleepy middle name. Like you know? <laughs> First name, sleepy time, last name. <laughs> it starts with a Z, so it would have been perfect. Um, <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. But, yeah, um... That is that is one of those memories I will always hold on to because uh, anytime I had Bobber in another class, like as soon as it became a paired up or a teams thing, he didn't ask, he didn't anything, he just come sit by me, nice. knowing that didn't matter what group it was. Like I had his back the whole way through, we were going to be just fine. And like I said, I, I had him in some science classes and stuff. And while he struggled with certain things, it was like, hey, I need this, he'd go get it. Like. It might sound mean, but in all honesty, compared to the other people who would just cut him out of the group altogether, yeah. that guy was back just to have somebody. Well, honestly, his in his mind, he probably made him feel valuable because everybody else just pushed him away. You're like, well, I can use this. He's like, I will help you. You know, I, for sure. And like, and like I said, it's all part of my my own upraising and stuff. And mm -hmm. you know, everybody's got their different thing with that. And I, like I said, I understand if you don't have experience dealing with people with some of those issues it's really confusing um there are also times where you think you're being nice and that niceness is the wrong thing you you think you're being nice and polite about it in all actuality there's there's a 50 50 chance that you're making that person feel less valued because you're already making assumptions of what they are capable of you didn't right. even give them the exactly um, and so, yeah, stuff like that, I, I understood. And, you know, I got to meet Bobber's parents. Um, I am from, uh, you know, Swiss Bears originally from the state of Iowa. I'm a big Iowa Hawkeye fan. Turns out the special needs teacher in our high school is a graduate of the University of Iowa and nice. a Hawkeye fan as well. So after this whole incident went down, he had to talk with his main teacher, which was her. Um, we'll call her Miss Forrest. Um, Miss Forrest and I ended up getting along just fine, and there were actually a few classes that Bobber took because I was taking them. He was nice. trying to figure it out because he wanted things where, and most of them were electives, but it, it came down to he wanted to do these things, and most of the groups he'd be in would just kind of cut him out. So had a long and, history with Bobber there. Yeah, just trying to make his own way in the world, you know. Best of my knowledge, he's still doing good too. That's good uh, shit, man. Ran into his parents a couple of years back, and he's he's doing just fine. He uh, he lives in an assisted living and has a part time job. So Hell yeah, he's, he's a good for him. Member of society. Right on, dude. Pumper, what you got, bud? Other if random top... stories of the pumper. I don't know if I could top that one. Sleepy time is. Oh, don't worry. Good. My third one's the hardest one to top. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, this one is going to be a little skewed just because I can't remember fully. Uh, so let, let me preface this. This is where uh, this is where me and my friends did a, a little, little activities that wasn't drinking. Uh, <laughs> so right. uh, there was one time me and Those Orange cloudy were... Cloudy decisions you made? Cloudy decisions, yes. correct. Terror. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so me and Orange, we were just hanging out, and uh, if anybody ever had cloudy decisions, you guys kind of know the struggle of uh, where to get where to get it. Uh, so hey, man, 
This was I'll this was back in the day. Cloudy decisions, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little back in the day. Yeah. And uh, so this is where we were just texting people. We we're like, mm-hmm. "Hey, man, you, you you got the stuff, stuff like that." Yeah. Um, and so we kind of gave up hope a little bit. We were just chilling, and we we're just like, "There's no, there's no fucking no one." Then out of nowhere, uh, our buddy, or I don't want to say our buddy, uh, some guy, uh, that we will, we'll, we'll, we'll name him Dick. <laughs> we'll name him Adam. Okay. Um, so Adam text, uh, my buddy Orange was just like, "Hey man, uh, would you would you want some free stuff?" And we're just like, "Fuck." Did you just say <laughs> nobody? Nobody does that. Yeah, I was like, you yeah, don't man, give nothing away for free. I just, I just need a ride That's to. Crap. Yeah, he's like, I just need a ride for, to so and so, and we're like, I looked at him, I was like, fuck, man, what we got going on? <laughs> so we're like, fuck it, yeah, go ahead. And he, he, he sent us an address, and uh, we, I think this is sophomore year, so it's like, dude was the only guy with a car, and so, so we pull up, we go to dude's house. And he comes outside and he was like, Hey guys. And I looked at orange and I was just like, do you know this fucking dude? He was like, no, not even a little bit. He's like, guys, it's Adam. We're just like, sorry, but we don't remember you. And he was just like, Oh, well, cause we haven't really met. I just messaged you. I was just like, what? Cause like, cause orange thought it was a completely different guy from school. <laughs> so I was just <laughs> So some random dude just messaged us asking for a ride for some for some free stuff. And you're over here like, fuck it, let's give this dude a ride. Like, yeah, you guys are some nice like, people, uh, okay? And at this point, we're just like, it was, it was fucked up. Um, so he hops in the car. He tells us where he needs to go. We started driving. Uh, he hands us the stuff. We're just like, okay, well, cool. He's just like, you guys want to like light up right now? We're just like. No, we're probably gonna wait because we don't want to share with dude. You probably would have just did the whole thing with us. We're just like, nah, this this is fucking weird. We don't know you. We're just driving you and for payment of fucking bud, dude. So we're like, nah, fuck that. So we we drive there. He's just like, oh, you guys want to come inside? Uh, I'm sure they got more. You guys can match, do all this stuff. We're just like, uh, and then sh- <laughs> and then Orange is just like, fuck it. So we go inside this fucking house, dude. Right? <laughs> Life choices. Oh dude. my god. We go inside this house, and I'm having a fucking anxiety attack. So I'm just like, I don't know this dude. I don't know where the fuck we're at. I'm so fucking. And, and, I'm and, over here like, um, ways to die. <laughs> uh, Holy shit, so, yeah. So we get inside this apartment. Fucking reeks. Uh, there's like 10 people there. A couple of them are passed out. People are drinking. People are doing whatever the fuck. And we're just like, what the fuck did we just walk into? Um, oh, and. Mighty Gondra God. Yeah, and then there was a there was a couple of girls there, and they were all being flirtatious with literally fucking everyone. And and again, sophomores were just like, "This is fucking weird." Um, uh, you can hit this if I can hit that. <laughs> I gotta um, hit me that man's right there. So we ended. Up, I think we ended up matching, and then a, 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 as quickly as we got there, like we were just like, "Yeah, we gotta get out of here." He was just like, "Oh man, you gotta stay. You gotta give me a ride home and everything." We're just like, uh, "No, we don't." I was just like, Orange, I want to get out of here, dude. He was just like, yeah, I know, me too. And so me being me, uh, at the bars throughout my entire life, I liked the Irish goodbye. And for anybody who doesn't know what an Irish goodbye is, it's literally leave without saying a damn thing to anyone. It's not a so Midwest I- goodbye. You got to slap your knee and say, well, time to hit the old dusty trail. Nope. You know. I was going to say, <laughs> also known as ghosting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I literally, no, we grabbed our stuff. I literally grabbed his arm. We just walked the fuck up out of there. Uh, dude dude, uh, ended up uh, messaging us. He's like, oh, where'd you guys go? We're like, yeah, we got to go. Um, and then uh, I, I got to let you guys know. I didn't, we didn't learn our lesson because a couple of times we hit him up for some, some fucking bunk ass weed. But like, <laughs> so like later in life, we just hit him up. He's like, hey, got any? So we got a new uh, a new person out of it. We didn't die. Nice. nice Nobody nice. got hurt. 
That's what maybe matters. somebody overdosed. It was definitely oh, like man. a crack house, dude. <laughs> oh, you probably walked right into a crack house for sure. It and then chicks so are flirting because they fun. wanted free shit. That's what they were doing. They were trying it to offer their, I was saying, like, off of their body like for said, your you stuff. If I can hit that. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, you can hit, you can hit this if I can hit that. Yeah, I, I just fucking love how it was just some random dude. We're like, oh, yeah, we know you. And, some, and he, like, again, we and were in high school. Out, and you're like, who the fuck is this guy? And dead ass, this dude was at least 30 something while we were still in high school. It was weird how he even like messaged us. Like. Yeah, it was so I, fucking weird, dude. But hey, young you know, dumb it's, it's funny as, <laughs> Facts, dude. It, it's funny. As a younger bear, I was always like 30 year old talking to teenagers. Like, this shit seems weird. Like, that's a big red flag. Now that I'm the 30 year old, I can't fathom why I would be talking to a teenager. That right. isn't like my child. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, right. it's so weird because, like, yes. when I flash back to those situations and trying to tell other friends, like, that shit's weird. Like, no, this isn't normal, man. No, they're really nice. They're, yeah, this isn't normal. Like, there's no, no it... reason a 30 year old is chilling with a, like, now, like I said, now that I'm 30, I can tell you there is no fucking reason a 30 year old is chilling <laughs> with a teenager and it isn't there. Exactly. <laughs> You know, I've hung out with my there's my a, teenage daughter's friend. Program. Like, the only reason I would hang out with someone that age is because <laughs> my teenage daughter brought her teenage friend. Right. Yeah, it's the only reason. Oh, so. when my niece lived with me, same thing. Like, mm-hmm. and even then, it was like sometimes they would ask to do certain things, and it was like I'm not comfortable with that. I'll pass. No thanks. Like, we're not doing that. Like, exactly. well, my parents let me. That's cool. I'm not. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> let me tell you how much cooler your parents are than me, and you're going to learn that. <laughs> like that's fine. Hell yeah, dude! <laughs> All right, Swiss. Let's, so, see, uh, let's hear that shit, man. I love it. Yeah, to, to wrap up for the day, final story. Um, I used to work for a uh, a company who sells vacuums door to door. Let's call them Schmerby. Uh, we will call them Schmerby. <laughs> um, I worked with a partner. We will call him Doggy because that was his actual nickname. So um, we're working for this company, and when you sell a vacuum, sometimes you get referrals to go back to houses or to go to different houses mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and that's part of their business model. And uh, we had sold a vacuum a while back, and the house that we were going to that morning was uh, an hour and a half drive from our depot, but it was on one of our better sales. So we were feeling pretty good about it and decided to go ahead and take it, Um, knowing that it would kind of eat most of our day. Like normally we would try to get two or three of these in a day, and this one would probably, you know, take up two slots. So we head out to this place, and we get there, and it's on the outskirts of town, and it's on the outskirts of a decent-sized town, uh, about three-quarters the size of Milwaukee, we'll say, or one-third the size of Milwaukee, like a decent-sized little city. And this thing is a double-wide trailer that is, like, up on bricks with a skirting around. And there's nothing fancy about it, but it doesn't look run down either. But the neighborhood around it isn't the greatest looking. Uh, Grass is a little overgrown and stuff. And we're like, okay, cool, whatever. I don't know the age. I just know the name. So, like, I don't know who to even expect on the other side of the door. That's how this works. So, you know, we go up and we got our suits and ties on and stuff because you got to look business for this job. And I knock on the door and a man answers the door in a robe. And when I say a robe, I mean, like, minus the sequins, this is a Ric Flair robe. Woo! It it is feathered. It is furred. It's an expensive robe, yeah. even if it's a knockoff or not real, whatever. This is a very expensive robe, and it's the first time I get to look inside the house, and I notice right away that the things inside the house look very expensive compared to the house itself. And so we'll call him. We'll call him Roger. So Roger, Roger, Roger. opens the door here. And, I explain what we're here for, and he's like, oh, yeah, come on in. So we go in, and Roger's got a leather everything, 
and I start to notice that everything in the house is glass or mirrored. Like, he has a glass coffee table. <laughs> he has a glass entertainment center. All of the decorations on the wall are a mirror of some kind. None of them are like pictures or anything like that, Hans. They are literally different shaped mirrors. The they best are very shaggy face. carpet, though. <laughs> they have very shaggy carpet, though, and the whole place looks dusty for whatever reason. But like I said, everything, I immediately noted that like everything inside just the living room area I was standing in had to have been rivaling that house. Like, it was some ridiculous stuff. They had multiple consoles set up on that TV. They had an amazing sound system running through. And, like, I've been in bands. I've DJed. So, like, I'm not the greatest or most up on it. But, like, I can spot an expensive system when you see an expensive system. And so, like, immediately right away, I'll, like, between the robe and the things inside this house, one of these things is not like the other. Like, this is a little fucked up. So he gets me set up in the living room and... When you work for Schmerby, you uh, pull these things, and there's a little filter that you put on instead of a bag, and it shows you everything that you pulled out of the carpet while you had it turned on, vacuuming for that little bit. And I did the first few of these pads, and I kept pulling out this white powder. Well, my pads are white, so you can't really see it. So I sent Doggy out to the car to grab black pads, which we would normally use on a bed to show, like, dead skin cells and stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so he comes back in with our black pads, and I pull a mountain of this white crap out of his carpet onto this thing. And he tells me to set it on his coffee table. Like, so I'm holding it, <laughs> staring at it, like, what the fuck? Like, I'm having that moment, you know, where I'm starting to put some shit together. Yeah, the pieces are aligning. He tells me to put it on, right. And so he tells me to put it on the table. So I do. And all of a sudden he turns and he yells to his buddy, and we're going to call his buddy Troy. And so he yells to his buddy, like, hey, Troy, come out here. So Troy comes out this back fucking room that I assumed was a bedroom off the living room. And he opens the door, and they have a fucking hot tub sunk into the floor. (laughs) (laughs) It's still a a carpeted bedroom, but because that bitch is up on jacks, he cut a fucking hole in the floor and stuck a goddamn hot tub in there. So this back room is, again, opens the door, and there's three or four mirrors hung on the wall. Like, what the fuck is going on? You have a hot tub inside this thing. And his buddy walks right over and goes, oh, shit, is that what I think it is? And he sticks his pinky in his mouth and then sticks it in the fucking powder on the table and then sticks it back in his mouth and rubs it all over. And that's when it hits me. These guys sell cocaine. (laughs) (laughs) I have just vacuumed an eight ball out of his carpet. Yeah, And they proceed to have the discussion that it's high enough quality yet to sell it as low-grade shit to the hardcore junkie thing. Holy shit. Business opportunity. And for the next 15 minutes, I stand there staring at their floor as they proceed to have an entire conversation about this. And my partner and I are trying to pretend we don't fucking exist. Like, I don't know shit. I don't know you. Like, this is an awkward situation. That could go south real quick, too. Okay, I think this is so, a well-deserved... This shit is bananas. <laughs> no, that shit is fucking bananas, dog. <laughs> so, like, I, I just put together what I'm standing in and why things don't make sense. Yep. And then there's the second thought. The house is up on brick. How much cocaine is under the house right now? <laughs> Where footage wise and considering what a brick is, like a kilo of fucking coke looks like in brick form. Oh my god. <laughs> I I could literally be standing on top of a few hundred kilos of cocaine. <laughs> and yeah. I'm about to and I'm about to suck God only knows how much out of the fucking carpet. I no longer have a desire to be doing anything. Um, like I was supposed to shampoo that bitch that day. I guarantee you that did not happen. Um, Hell no. I will tell you that now. Um, so these guys are like, hey, can you get that dust thingy off to the side that you're using? Like, yes, you can buy one of those. It costs X. Can we get more of those black pads? Yes, you can, but it costs X. <laughs> They're all cool with it. And he's like, dude, totally going to take one. And he pulls a giant wad of cash out of his fucking robe. 
And that's when it hits me. Like, oh, he's about to pay cash for this. All right. Well, fuck. I'm going to cash in on this. Fuck this dude. Like, this has been the most awkward thing in my life. Hell yeah, dude. And, and like, the, the guys, fact that you're a potential like, witness. I was just going to say, and there's a part of me that's still questioning, like, so is this one of those, like, we go back to the car, grab the vacuum, and come back in and never come back out? Like, you openly talk business. You guys seem to be a little fucked up right now. Clearly, your buddy had shit going on in the other bedroom because he wasn't alone in the hot tub. Like, I, I'm having all sorts of questions. And so he pulls out this wad of cash, and he's like, yeah, dude, take one. How much are they? I told him it was $1,000 more than what it was supposed to be. <laughs> he's paying cash because anything over anything over a certain dollar amount swiss bear puts in his pocket and takes home hell yeah so I, I told him that shit cost a grand more than what it did and he's like fuck you know what how much for the whole package that way sweet i'll take three of them uh. this man handed me ten thousand dollars in cash that day for three back say what <laughs> dude that's crazy man what the fuck four four grand of that came home with me but so to finish the story up at schmerby when you have a sale and you're early on and you're uh working there as i was you come in the next day and you meet with your fellow salesmen and your big sales rep and you kind of have this like rally meeting and then everybody takes turns telling everybody you know if they sold one or sold anything the day before you tell your victory tale. I'm in that next meeting, and they're like, three vacuums in one house, and God, it's amazing, and we haven't seen that. And they're all like, tell us the story. And I'm like, I ain't got shit to say. <laughs> Don't send anybody, like, whatever you do, never send anybody back there. Well, but they, I, you need to listen to me. Do not freaking send, send anybody back to that house ever. And like I said, there's like 10 people here now, and my boss. And now they're starting to get pissed. Like, why won't you talk about it? Why won't you tell the story? And I end up just looking at my boss and like, it was a fucking Coke house, dude. They are selling cocaine. Like, I sold three vacuum cleaners at a markup of $1,000 compared to the overall tag price to a freaking set of cocaine dealers yesterday because they had the fucking cash on them and they were high enough that this seemed like good business. They are <laughs> literally using our vacuum to recycle cocaine from the parties they throw in their house. Hell Don't yeah. fucking send anybody back. And he just goes, I should have talked to you beforehand about this. I'm like, and I tried, sir. But <laughs> you, you didn't want to hear it. Listen. You told me to yeah. save it for the meeting. Like, So I did. I didn't have shit to tell you. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that I, you know, the worst part was I had to send Doggy back to get two more vacuums because we didn't carry three on them. Yeah. So I spent a fucking hour and a half chilling in this dude's house. And at one point, we're there, he offered me some of his carpet dust. <laughs> hey, hey, baby, you not want some carpet like, dust? Not even fucking good I shit. Pass on that. Carpet. Uh, no, he, he was willing to bust out the good shit. He did a few of those in front of me. Uh, he offered me some of the ganj. I'm like... All respect, sir. And this is the moment we finally had with one another. Just looked at him like, with all respect, sir. I sell vacuum cleaners. I don't fucking know you. You don't fucking know me. When I leave here, I was just a vacuum salesman. Exactly what I am here right now. We understand each other. He's like, better than you think, kid. Better than you think. And that was that. Say, that was a is, test, bro. Was, you know that, right? Out of high school. I was 19. Like, Oh, yeah. No, and, and, like, I understood that by refusing all those offers, I immediately made myself the enemy, and that's why it was that moment of, like, just so you know, I don't know you, you don't know me, I don't care to know you, this is a business deal, as soon as we hand off the goods here, I'm on my way out. Like, I don't fuck with you, you don't fuck with me. Like, Hell yeah, man. That's just I don't appreciate wild, what you're doing out here, but uh, I definitely appreciate the four grand that went into my pocket in one day. Right. Exactly. Jesus fucking Christ. And this is why I stopped doing things. Fucking Schmerby, dude, out here doing crazy shit. I I, yeah, I, I, I do think that story deserves a well. Because that shit is bananas, bro. That... Like I said, life has been, life has been an interesting freaking journey for me. From uh, disabled children knocking people out to uh, selling vacuums selling to vacuum crackheads, to cocaine dealers. Yeah. It's wild, man. 
So with that, that'll end the story time with the Bears. Uh, we will see you guys next time. So from Doc, Bumpy, and Swiss, we'll see you guys later. <laughs> Peace out, yo. Thank you for listening to Sleuthcast. Catch the Bears every Friday. For more Bear entertainment, follow the Bears on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and on YouTube at SXZ Bear. For gaming content and live streams, catch the Bears on YouTube at SXZ Bear. Thank you for listening. <laughs>